One of the things that Cuba Centers does is it really looks at what are the what are the models that are really making a difference for families in communities. My name is Ann Shi, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for all of the upstate programs that we have at Cuba Centers. In the mid-90s, there became a whole body of programs that were called evidence-based. They were called the Blueprint Programs. One of those was uh, multidimensional treatment foster care. While we started with multidimensional treatment foster care, this evidence-based model, um, that model was, was also totally groundbreaking in that it wrapped each child in foster care with a team. It wrapped a team around each child, so a team that had a clinician, a case manager, and a skills coach, right? So each child, each foster parent, had a team that wrapped around them. These were children that typically would go into residential treatment. And so the goal that we had was to really provide homes for children. We know what evidence showed us, all the evidence-based models that were created, um, that were studied and created through the 90s and were part of these blueprint models were for um, delinquent youth. And the research all showed that when you put delinquent youth together, you get higher levels of delinquency in youth. They become better criminals. And that's what institutional care did, that's what group care does. So that the idea was, let's try to figure out ways to um, really focus on that adolescence so that they don't have other adolescents to become better delinquents with. Multidimensional treatment foster care was very behavioral. It was a very behavioral based program. One child to one home, team approach wrapping around that child and foster parent and biological parent. Um, and what we found after years of doing that, we found that we really, we really were seeing that these children were coming from very high levels of trauma and that um, this model was so behaviorally focused that they weren't really. Um, they weren't really willing or able to look at why might a child be experiencing these behaviors? What happened to that child that this is where how they're expressing themselves? They were looking at, this is the behavior, change the behavior. And we were saying, we need to understand why this is happening. And so that was where trauma-informed work came in. And so what we ended up doing was separating ourselves from that particular multidimensional treatment foster care and really using this team approach in our treatment family foster care, but making it a much more clinically focused program. And so our program is very trauma informed, it's clinically driven, we still have that team approach. And it's very different even today. It's still the most intensive family foster care program that you will find. There are so many examples, there's so many examples of the children in this program and, um, and the foster parents who are unbelievable to hang in with the level. We have very high levels of mental health issues in children. Um, we have children with high behavioral needs. Um, we have children um, on the autism spectrum. These foster parents, these children need this very, very, very intensive support so that they can stay with family because it goes with our belief that families are where children need to, um, families need to be the ones that are raising children. 
Um, and we also need a very close connection between the foster parents and that I call, I say permanency resource. It's like a fancy name for maybe children is, children are gonna go home to their kin. Maybe they're going to go home to their parents. Maybe they're going to go home to a very dear loved family friend that is now going to be this child parent. So the terminology is their permanency resource. It sounds a little too formal, but so, but the point is, is that the team wraps around everyone so that we can really support the child while they're in care and support that reunification with the family. I was speaking with our VP, who is um, Freddie Griffin, and she is our VP of our Central New York Treatment Family Foster Care. And Freddie, every week, um, has dinner with one of the foster parents and one of the children um, that we serve because she, you know, that, that she wants that connection with the family and the kids. So she was with the child and the family and the child said, well, guess who you're talking to? And um, she said, well, who am I talking to? And the child said, you're talking to the, prom, the new prom queen. And, um, um, and then in her next statement, she looked at Prenny and she said, did you ever think a kid in foster care could be a prom queen? And so, you know, we have stories like that, story after story after story of, of, you know, children who have gone through so much and don't, sometimes don't understand their worth or don't believe that they can accomplish things. And that these types of programs with the, just the intensive support and the caring and the, you know, attention to the needs of the child and the foster parent, kids can work, you know, it can work that children don't need to go to that institutional level. Um, it's hard. Foster parents really hang in there through children struggling terribly because of the trauma that they've experienced. They struggle terribly and um, the foster parents have hung in there um, and our program responds 24-7 again responds to what foster parents need. They believe, like in our Home Builders program, they believe that every child, every parent, every everyone has strengths and it's our job to work with, with everyone. It's our job, you know, it never will work that that child didn't engage with us so we're not gonna work with you. That doesn't work, right? It's our job to figure out who is this baby? What do they need? How can we work with them?